Hi, thanks for stopping by for a quick look at Microsoft Dynamics GP 2010 R2. Uh, Microsoft put a lot of effort into the development of the R2 version of GP 2010, uh, but a lot of exciting new features. Uh, we're going to move through them relatively quickly to give you uh, insight into the application, some of the new tools, and I think you'll find it pretty exciting. As you can tell by the uh, homepage changes that have been made, Microsoft has, of course, integrated uh, SQL reporting services into the application. Uh, it's best used with uh, SQL version 2008. Uh, you'll get the maximum utilization out of all of the KPIs and charts and graphs uh, that Microsoft has built into the product. We're also going to take a look at some of the advances made to the navigation pane today, uh, as well as a variety of ways to not only drill down through these reports back into uh, physical transactions within the GP database, uh, but also to look at a new tool called Business Analyzer, which is a desktop widget uh, which most executives will enjoy, uh, being that you don't have to log into Dynamics uh, directly to get access to that information. So uh, one of the things we'll look at, uh, as you can see here on the right-hand side of the screen up uh, in this vision called Customer Year-to-Date Sales by State, uh, certainly the information is presented in a far richer context than in previous releases and previous versions of the application. It also affords us the capability, as I mentioned, uh, to drill down into sublists, which are brought into the screen right here, or be able to take a full screen view of that information by launching your uh, IE browser window. You also have the capability, as I was talking about previously, in drilling into a particular segment, as I did to uh, Michigan on that map, uh, to be able to look at some underlying data sets. And of course, once it's in SQL reporting services, the ability to sort this information in any fashion, uh, the ability to export this information out to a variety of platforms, including PDF, Word, or TIFF files. Uh, it also features the capability to be able to drill down, as you notice right underneath here, into physical transaction records. So what I did there is I linked from the customer uh, ID link right into the master file. Of course, and this does occupy a GP user, but it allows the information to be very, very directed. Uh, had this been a, an invoice transaction view, uh, then certainly you'd have the capability of drilling down directly into that actual uh, invoice itself. Uh, Microsoft has produced probably 53 to 55 different SQL reporting services reports. I'm just going to pull up this screen called Customizing Our Home Page, which you're probably familiar with, getting into the metrics section. And you'll notice here, once it's populated, that you do have the capability of selecting from any one of these, as I mentioned, 55 or 60 different reports. It's expanding all the time. A lot of users up on partner source are contributing content. Uh, so your experience uh, in connecting to a customer source will certainly be very, very helpful. You notice they did add another feature here, giving us the capability to edit the information. Uh, not for the faint of heart, but if you want to uh, learn a little bit, very similar to Crystal Reports, uh, being able to edit this information right into SQL reporting services, uh, probably a, a very solid feature for you and your team to be able to work with. So that's taking a look at the home page itself and uh, some of the new features there. What they've also done is they've made a, some significant improvements into the navigation pane. Uh, and the word navigation pain is probably appropriate to previous versions because it was a bit of a pain in being able to get together, uh, or compile the information rather uh, quickly. And what uh, Microsoft has done is made the list loading a lot less arduous and uh, certainly moved much, much quicker. A lot of people would, by default, turn over to the smart list tool, which is very, very helpful. Uh, but certainly being able to use this to queue up things like sales orders or invoices uh, certainly advantageous, and Microsoft recognized that that was a, a bit of a problem and, and put some significant time into uh, making this much, much quicker. Once you pull up the list for the first time, you'll see it does refresh the data content. If you remember, it used to scroll through here rather slowly. And I've got a substantive list here uh, of invoice transactions. I did a significant filter on this. If I wanted to look at the all sales order transactions, I'd get the pretty much same result, instantaneous gratification as it pertains to navigation lists. So it certainly makes it workable. What they've also done, if you noticed here, is they put in integrated analytics alongside. So the very same SQL reporting services tools that we looked at on the home page 
are now available uh, on some of your navigation pane lists. And these metrics that are presented here uh, can be customized just by going through the navigation pane options, hitting customize. They've added this report settings section. And again, it gives you the capability to pick and choose from applicable reports to bring into this view of information. I've selected two to bring into here. I'm just going to refresh this information. And one of the first things you'll notice is that uh, we do have the capability, of course, to drill down, make the report a little bit easier to read. When looking at the receivable aging for this particular customer, it does feature the same type of drill down capability that we were looking at. And of course, drilling back down to the source transaction is available. What's also very interesting is it does give you the capability to select multiple records. If you notice now, this viewer has a little refresh arrow. And we can reload this report. And this is going to be integrated and sensitive to the particular customers that we have checked off here. So again, once I pull this up, take a larger view, a little bit more presentable, you'll see here that this data is now completely integrated with the list selection, which is pretty, pretty nifty. So you can let your imagination go with this a little bit and think about this in the context of sales and analytics getting comparative sales historical information, uh, looking at total sales for a particular customer over a period of time. It's now going to call in those three customers to it. It also does give us the capability right on the fly to interactively change the dates. I've got some demo data sets for 4-12 of 2017. Let me pull that back up again. And We'll now then get some information presented. Not a very active lot, but certainly we can see this uh, has some much nicer utility in terms of getting these comparative sets. You also have the capability, uh, depending upon the particular report, to refresh periods, be able to look at a greater timeline, change the dates, change the column types. So Microsoft has gone a long way. The anticipation there is that you'll spend a little bit of time learning how to uh, work within these reports. It's really not that difficult, uh, difficult rather, but it, it certainly is uh, uh, you know, a worthwhile endeavor. So that's some of the interesting changes that have been made. Uh, certainly rich with utility, and I think you get a lot of value out of this. And that's the strategic direction that Microsoft is going to take the solution going forward. Contextual BI is really on a rule what they do. The underlying application, while making improvements along the way. Uh, certainly remains uh, consistent and strong, but they're going to follow their uh, business intelligence information. To that end, there's data, which is in SQL reporting services, and looking at how we, in fact, can launch this within a, a browser window. And you do have the capability for certain executives. And I'm just going to minimize this, and I'm going to get into a solution um, that is called the business analyzer. Clicking over on Dynamics, moving into Business Analyzer. This is, in fact, a login. Uh, so it is controlled through Microsoft licensing, uh, but this is done as what's called a DCO client license login. And what that means is probably uh, uh, translates to a very inexpensive uh, solution. It's, uh, I think it's $299 or uh, $199 per user. Uh, and this widget can be customized as is needed. Business executive can scroll through this information, get the very same rich content, have the same rich drill down capability uh, that one would be looking for. And this, of course, can just sit and scroll. We can set timings. There are some option settings uh, within here. Uh, certainly just select and filter the reports. Uh, but if we just selected options, it's going to bring up the screen and give us the capability to dictate how frequently this scroll should work, how large the screen is going to be displayed be able to pick a particular role for a user uh, that will unlock specific reports. And of course, you do have the capability of overriding specific report selections. And it's, of course, completely module-based. So it makes it real easy to get this information presented. Don't have to be into GP. Nifty little tool. Uh, and certainly a low-cost way of getting to the business information. There is another exciting piece of software I did want to show you directly within. Uh, the GP application. I'm just going to close out of this and I'm going to get it back into GP. And uh, that involves the email templates. Uh, some of you who have been using 
Dynamics GP 2010, are familiar with the fact that, that Microsoft has written all of their business forms in the area of sales orders, purchase order documents, etc., to run through Microsoft Word as the uh, conduit uh, to deliver the content. And um, what they've done is they've built in a nifty little tool that allows us to control the flow of that email for a specific transaction. So I'm going to take a quick jump here into the tools that set up and get over into sales and move into an area called email settings. And I'm just going to define that it's going to be working with my Outlook client. And what we're able to do is this is now system-wide be able to set up a default message ID. You can override this on a customer-by-customer -customer basis if you wanted to. But these are the key documents that are going to be, from a sales perspective, uh, emailed out or potentially emailed out. So if I wanted to, I've selected the concept of emailing a sales invoice with a specific message. And if I drill into this message ID, I can have, of course, as many user-defined message IDs I want. They can be certainly customer-specific. And I'm just going to open this one and look at some of the work we've done here. So within sales document, I describe this being specifically an invoice message. And I've said that it's going to be functioning through the series of sales versus purchasing. And I'm going to select the document type, which I've done, which is going to be a sales invoice. And what I did over here in highlighting it is I've done some inserts of particular data content. So I'm just going to erase this for the moment, show you how easy it is to customize the message content that we want to. So once I've selected that it's going to be on an invoice, I want to get the contact name brought out. If you notice, there's a field down here that is called field select. Pretty easy. We also have some additional fields that we can select from just by hitting this checkbox, kind of broadens all this. This is a nice array of information, including access to all of the user-defined tables, both from the sales order and from the customer order. And what I wanted to do here is I wanted to grab the contact name that I had defined. And this is, of course, the address-specific contact name. And uh, once I've, I've done that, I can indicate where I want to insert it. Just by clicking on that field, hit Insert, gives me the right syntax, and away it goes. Just give a quick check of validation that the fields do match and I'm going to save this message content. I then have the capability, of course, that I've got it selected here. If I wanted to get into a specific customer setup to apply this document to work off of a customer, it's going to load my navigation list. You can see nice and quick. Drill into this, hit the email option that's in here, and you can see I've selected that the specific message content that I want uh, when generating a sales invoice is going to be the sales document message. Uh, I'm not going to apply that to these other forms. I could set those up individually if I want to. I'm just going to hit OK to this, and I'm just going to further verify I've got uh, name set up under the primary address information, and I've got an email address specified uh, that this document is going to be sent to. So with all of that information set up, again, I can do it globally or individually. I then can go about very quickly entering a customer uh, invoice transaction, which I'm going to do. All right, make sure I've got the right customer, which I do. Just going to set up a quick batch here. Put in a purchase order number and uh, select an item that I'm going to use. Override this credit warning, and I am now in a position to print this physical invoice. One of the other things I had done is I put in a tracking number. Just put in something fictitious here so it can fill in the data that I wanted to, uh, and we'll look at that email message in a moment. I'm going to print this document out. I'm going to say invoice, and I'm just going to send the document in email. Generating the email message. This could be done, as you know, on a one-off basis, or it can be done in batch. So if I was printing all of the documents from out of that test batch or out of the shipped invoices batch for that day, uh, that would have gone along with it. And what I'm going to quickly do is go back to my home page, reload that. Since I'm not actually connected to a email on this uh, email server on this test environment. I'm just going to 
quickly look at uh, this document, and this is the one set at 1006. And if you notice, filled in here, or hello Theo Contos, here's your invoice number. It was shipped on 412 of 2017, which was in fact our test date that we were working with. My tracking number information was pulled in here, and of course I do have the invoice. And able to pull that up in web form. Of course, this can all be customized through the use of the templates. So they've made it very easy to control the flow of emails, made it very easy to control the message content, to direct it to the proper recipient, and to be able to monitor that these, in fact, have, uh, have been sent out. So again, some very exciting tools, integrated analytics, tied into the navigation pane is probably one of the more exciting features of this. Quick loading analytic panes, or navigation panes, I should say. So that scrolling through large quantities of data through this utility is, is nice and easy, and that makes nice use of the ability to look at specific quotes or specific transactions, such as uh, invoices or orders pending credit approval. So not that working with smart lists is difficult, but certainly this makes it a heck of a lot easier. And from a credit management perspective, if we're looking at credit holds or those new orders that need to clear credit, being able to selectively pick and choose customers based upon this data and having the results uh, display right in your navigation window does make it uh, significantly easier for everybody to do their job. So that's it. Thanks for taking a few minutes. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, remember, if uh, you do need any support or assistance, mybar.net is here to help. Thanks much.